Okay, let's actually go in and start setting up some of the software for some initial programming. Um, you can see that I have an active program. If you look up, if you look up at the top up here of your screen, you'll see that uh, my active program name is clearly listed at the top of the screen. Um, so I know this is the active program that I'm running. It's the same program we worked on in the last video. So if I go to device and networks, you can see my PLC hardware is there with my own personal computer that I'm programming from. But if I go into PLC programming, it's going to bring up something called organizational blocks. How Siemens does um, programming structure is through organizational blocks, not routines or subroutines. It's through organizational blocks. And the, the main dog that you have to have in all your programs is organizational block one or OB1. So you Star Wars fans out there, you'll never forget because you'll use the force to find OB1. Um, that is the main block that schedules all the other jobs or schedules uh, the tasks that you're using, et cetera, et cetera. So don't ever delete or change OB1. Always have OB1 here because that is, again, what the processor will be looking for to ensure smooth programming. So I just double clicked on this organizational block and, the, and it pulls up the screen. Um, this is where I do my programming. I can, I can clear if I can, let me zoom in a little bit so it makes it a little bit bigger. But this is my programming side. And if you, and let me at least take a few minutes to talk through, walk through this project tree over here because this is where you're going to find everything that you need. Um, this is where our communication is. So remember, this is station one, and we did uh, we remove that. It could be. Oh, I'll just keep that there. If I go to online access, this is where we went to before, and this will show me everything that's currently online. So this is my communications tab right here. So you can see here. This is my communications tab. And this is my active PLC. Now, if you want to add more PLCs or more things, you got to go to add new device. You can go to add new devices here. If I click on devices and network, in theory, come on. Yeah, devices and networks, that will get us to the page that we're at or it will show us visually all of our devices and network together. This will be important when we start doing HMIs or if we want to link a couple PLCs together in a network, if we want to use a get and put command. But here's our PLCs and different setups. I'm going to delete this because this is a holdover from our last program. And so now this is PLC1. So I went into device networks here. And, and that's what came up when I double clicked. All right. If I double click on device configuration, that shows us our good old friend that we worked on last time. Okay. So if you need to rechange something or adjust something, just click on device configurations under your PLC. All right. You can go online, do diagnostic here. But under program blocks is where I find OB1. Okay. This is where I do my programming. So far, so good. There's technology objects that would be your, like your PIDs and your pulse widths and your high-speed counters there. External source file, things that you can link to. PLC tags is next. Okay. The TIA portal is tag-based logic. Um, if I go in my default tag table, you'll notice something. I'm going to make this all my system bits that I just created are already here and it gives me a data type and it gives me an address. So quick talk about data types. Like in other operating systems, a bool is either on or off. A byte is eight bits. Um, if I pull up data types here, you'll see a bunch um, of different ones, but you got the, your dint or double integer or double word. Uh, they tend to, this one tends to use a lot with words rather than integers. Um, another operating system uses integers a lot, but here's a regular integer. That's a 16-bit um, 
string of uh, a string of ones and zero uh, ones and zeros. Um, you know, here's your real number, so that's a float value uh, to, for decimals. But there's your s simple integer, which is eight. So they do have some of some of that carryover, but usually they're going to use Word a lot. So if I click on this and just yeah, and you can see it's a memory word number two. So that's something that you can use for numbers. If I want to delete it out, right click and hit delete, and there it goes. One good thing um, you can do, so say I have a bunch of push buttons. So start push button one. It will automatically autofill to the next thing because it's smart like that. To change, all I gotta do is hit the little chevron, change my identifier. So I uh, the only types of tags that I can kind of create is an I, a Q, and an M. So an, an input, an output, and a memory. Okay, so memory bit will be just something that turns on and off inside the controller. An input is physically linked to an input on the PLC. An output is physically linked to an output on the PLC. So I can do input, do my start address, so I'll say zero, bit number zero. Hit the green check mark and look, now it's there. So let's say all of these are start push buttons in some capacity, like Excel. If I move my, my cursor over the square and it becomes a plus sign, I can copy and paste and check this out. It auto numbers and it auto continues, just like Excel. So that's really nice if you have a bunch of, uh, uh, of, of memory bits and other things. I'm going to delete these. So that's nice. So here's a start push button. I'm going to just put stop push button. But it continues on. I'm going to say enable push button, uh, reset push button. But it's nice because it's automatic re refilling up what the next bit is. So if I have a list of bits and I know what they are, I can just type in the name. I don't have to keep highlighting that, that I.O. on this side. So now I'll move to my outputs. So light one. Now I went to the input, but all you do is hit the, hit the little arrow, change it to a Q, dot zero, boom, there we go. And just for con confusion's sake, I'm going to change this to light zero, just so we start numbering a zero. And if I got a bunch of lights, um, I can copy and paste. And I think it did it. Maybe. There it goes. One, two, three, and that way it matches. So this is where I would always start, to start my tags, okay? So now I have some tags that I have set up here. Other things localized here, and you can see some of this shows up in the detailed view. Um, you're watching force tables, we'll talk about in, in another lecture. My local modules, I can go in and start looking at uh, my hardware specifically in, in here and see, because if, because if you notice down here, I have a bunch of hardware that I haven't determined tags on, but they all show up right here. So I don't have to go searching. I can always go to my local modules and get my tags that way if I know the address but haven't set it up in my system. So, okay. So let's go back to our main operating block, and here's my network. I can do a block title for the whole program. I can make comments here. Um, this will... Turn on a light. So there's my basic network. Now, this is a rung. This should look like fairly simple ladder logic. And if you look up here, that should look familiar. I got my normally open contact. You know, I got my normally closed contact. Now, remember, though, when we're programming, that's logic normally closed, normally open contacts. So be careful. And I got my uh, assignment or output coil. This is an empty box. More on that later. And this is how I open a branch or close a branch. And I don't have to drag. All I have to do is highlight the rung, and I can click on this and just click, 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 click as many as I want. Now, it automatically will put in another network. It just does that. Don't worry about having a blank network. It's not going to freak out. I'm going to just click on this and hit delete. And I just want to show you. If I click on this, it will show me all my tags. That's really cool. Also, look over. I want to give you a couple other options. If I hit my tag table, look over here. It shows up down here. 
And if I just have one thing, I can grab a little purple tag and drag it right there, and it will automatically populate with the enable push button right there. And so if I click another thing, I, it showed up another rung, but I gotta make sure I can always drag it up here to fix it. And again, I can go down, down over here to my detail views and I can find the next thing I wanna light up. And, and here you go, um, that will turn on. So kind of cool, really cool. Okay, so enable push button, you know, here's my light um, and I can turn on the light. Just so let's say for instance though I don't have I don't know what's here. So I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna randomly type in, say I want another switch. So I don't know, it's my I gave it some random name. Just go with it. If I right click and define tag, it will let me define the tag right here on the spot. So even if I forget, here I go. I just define this as a memory bit because I don't have access to my hardware back in my in my office. If I do this as a memory bit. Normally open memory bit. Now I'm, I'm assuming you have a little bit of PLC knowledge, so I'm not going into the logic per se. Um, that this will, when this becomes true, we'll turn this on here. But this is a basic program. I have my tags defined, so it, so the, the software knows what hardware is a match with what uh, operation. If I get lost and this stuff gets hidden, because if you go, if you you can move things, it, everything is here in my base on my basic instruction side. So if you look over here, right here, I can go to bit operations, and there's these same bits. Okay, more on these later. More on these later, but here's my basic bits. So far, so good. So now that I have a, a basic program, all I have to do to go online is once again, over PLC, I can right click, compile. I'm gonna rebuild all software blocks because that just makes sure that everything gets clearly rebuilt. And, and what compiling does is packages the software in a way so that it's compressed and e easy, e easy to read with for the PLC. So it's not just taking up a bunch of random memory bits all over the controller type, okay? Um, so. So I, I just rebuilt my heart software. Now if I go to download to device, I can download all my hardware and software again or only changes. So I've hit download, do that, and it's the screen, and the screen will pop up to make sure that I don't make errors. That's a good thing. So it's going to check before loading, see if I have any errors. And now I can load. And start all modules. Finish. So right now, I'm not online with it directly. So if I want to monitor online changes, I can't. What I need to do is to go two things. One, I can go online or what I like to say is put the sunglasses on. This is monitoring. And if I do this, this will allow me to go online to monitor. So you can see that right here. And if you see orange, it means you're online. A couple other things to keep in mind is check your check your check over here uh, the color of the boxes. If everything is green, that means it's good. If it's orange, you may have made a change online. You need to re-download. I'll show you that in a second. Um, or if it's red, you're having an error. Sometimes your hardware will um, give an error if it's not compiled right, so you may need to recompile and download, so keep that in mind. But here's my processor. I'm gonna modify this to one. And now look, this has gone true. If the, if the neon green goes through, this is a true, a true statement. All I gotta do is modify to zero, and everything is hunky-dory. 
now if I were to change this. Uh, if I were to change change this bit, I would need to stop monitoring and, and just say, no, I don't want to go offline. And if I want to change this bit to a normally closed bit, you can see over here a couple errors came up. First of all, there's a difference in lower level components and my online version is different than my online version. So if I need to change it, all I got to do is I can either right click and let me show you the other way, which I do quite often is, um, let me download to device, software only changes. It's going to ask me all this again. I'm going to hit load and now I've just done a quick edit and now everything is green and everything is hunky dory. If I hit my sunglasses again, you'll see it's live. Let me toggle this bit to, to one and you can see it goes false. So that's how you do some basic editing, basic programming, basic editing. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.